All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, this is good. <laughs> oh, boy, this is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Spicy. All right, let me stop, let me stop uh, using swords so I'm going to scratch my back, okay? Listen, let's not. I think the games are onto something. What? <laughs> Yo, it's so hard to say with a straight face. It really is. But I'm, I'm not gonna front. I think the games are genuinely onto something. And now more than ever, I'm open to it. So the, let me explain, okay? My mindset on relying on the manga that has changed over the course of time a bit where i used to be pretty much like 95 percent it's the manga and only the manga the manga is the way to go it is the primary canon it still is but it's the primary canon and you lead with that tremendously so the anime was there but you didn't really want to adhere to it and then you have the sbs's too and the sbs's they were nice just to get otis intel on certain matters but let's say there was something in the canon manga that actually contradicted what Otis said in SBS. You led with that and not with Oda's comments, essentially. Because Oda, a lot of times, would say, okay, well, it's going to be the year of Sanji. And then it winds up being two fantastic years, mind you, but still two years, damn near. Oda was always inconsistent on a lot of things that he stated as well. So Oda's word, even though he is the mangaka of One Piece, duh, that was inconsistent and we just had to see what happened in the actual manga. So back in the day, I led 90% of the times with the manga and then sometimes on occasion, anime and SBSs. But ever since the data books, where I'm not going to say that they're like genuinely right on all things, obviously, there are some contradictions here or there, duh, it is what it is. But ever since the data books, I've kind of changed my tune a bit to where I became more open to accepting more things outside the canon manga as truth and fact. So Sengoku having conquered his hockey is not a thing in the manga, but it's confirmed in a data book. Therefore, I have to accept it as is. So that dramatically changed my stance on okay, well, I have to rely on the data books a bit now because the data books are telling me things that the manga never has. And then it was Wano Country. I'm on the record saying this, I'll say it again. I will quadruple down, I will quintuple down. The One Piece Wano Country anime is better than the manga. I'll say it again. The One Piece Wano Country anime is better than the manga because for the most part, the details, like the pivotal details are better orchestrated in the anime than in the manga. So for example, the page one in Sanji thing. It's a great fight in the anime. It's stupendous, but we see it through and through. And we see page one active at the end of it all. Even though he got coasted by Sanji, he's still active at the end of it all. Whereas in the manga, it's like three pages of fighting and then, and then we just cut away. Like Sanji was T-posed in the sky and then he just drops down, that's it. So the moment we have now with the Toby Ropo, page one being there as a manga only reader is probably a bit more confusing Though when the anime gets there, because an M only watcher for them, it'll make a lot more sense. Because, yeah, he was still active. He was still active. Another example, well, let's say be the gambling scene with Zoro. Where we actually see how Tono Yasu and Zoro kind of bond. And how that progresses over the entire gambling scene. Which is essentially filler. But actually, that filler, you could argue, is more canon than the actual manga itself. Because we don't see what the hell happens. We have no idea what happens in the manga. So over the course of time, it's gone from like 90% relying on the manga to now like 75 or 70%. We're now, I'm more open now more than ever to relying on the anime and also the vivid cards for one piece kind of that's actually canon pivotal. And even though some things are relatively wrong, for example, now they're trying to add hockey to the Rokushiki guy, which is kind of weird. Rokushiki itself is hockey, which makes no goddamn sense. And then of course we have <laughs> the anime with Batman, who was looking pretty, pretty studly in the anime. And then you have Urashima, who's apparently <laughs> Whitebeard's second child. <laughs> apparently the Newgate family has ties to Wano, 
even then that means when Whitebeard hopped on to Wano Country, he went frolicking somewhere, met some woman, and then they gave birth to Urashima. And it's like, dude, like the anime was wild for that. They were wild for that. But Sayan! I'm willing to accept the anime adaptation in more respects than I ever thought before. And the same thing goes for the river cards. Again, saying Goku Congress Hockey, it is what it is. I just have to take it. I just gotta take it. So now we understand that. The games. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. Well, to be fair, 3 and 4, honestly. Because I did play 3 and 4 as this video is recording. I haven't played that yet. As of this video is recording. Here's the thing. We see in the Odin flashback, Roger and Whitebeard put an absurd amount of arm and hockey on their blades to the point where we see electricity and like fire streaks forming from their blades. Before they actually strike, we see them apply the hockey to their blades. And you could tell how tremendous that hockey was. You could tell. In Pirate Warriors 4, essentially, I'm seeing Shanks do the same thing, but to like a far more controlled degree, which is kind of nuts. Like if you go over Shanks' complete moveset in Pirate Warriors 4, Shanks is using the lightning, like the black lightning, as an attack. And we're seeing Roger and Wiper do that in the Odin flashback. And in Pirate Warriors 3, that was the same thing. Where in Pirate Warriors 3, Shanks does red lining, and he also applies black lining to his sword as well. Wait a minute now. 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 Hold on. Time out a second. I say, hold up. Wait a minute. Once again, we're seeing Roger and Whitebeard apply arm and hockey hardening lightning streaks of sorts to their blades. Shanks is doing that. He did the Empire Warriors 3, and we're seeing him do lightning hockey strikes of sorts in Pirate Warriors 4. Now, mind you, the movesets are a bit different from Pirate Warriors 3 to 4, but I think, in the general scheme of things, I think that Oda may have told Bandai some intel on Shanks as a combatant so they could have Shanks in that game and have a somewhat accurate moveset for Shanks. Just how I'm pretty sure that Oda also told Toy Animation some things to add when it came to the anime adaptation because they were in the manga. Whether it was the Zoro gambling scene, whether it was, you know, Sanji in page one, I'm pretty sure Toei kind of got some intel from Oda on things to add. At the bare minimum, what the game is alluding to for me right now is the game is alluding that Shanks can probably do the same thing that Roger and Whitebeard did, where they put that much arm and hockey on their blades. And if Shanks could, let's say, direct that lightning as like a strike from range, like what we see in the actual Pirate Warriors games. Bro, bro. Bro, that to me indicates that Shanks may have and probably does have the strongest arm in hockey, like right now, which does make sense to me to a degree because, well, Shanks is a Yonko, he's in the same league as Big Mom and Kaido. This is not something that, again, I'm going to guarantee here. Like, there are some guys in Bandai that know what Shanks is about. Hey, yo, Bandai, you know what? No. Don't spoil me. Don't spoil me. Send, send me nothing. In fact, Kaido in Power Warriors 4 can actually summon like ice. I was like, what the hell is this? And if you go back to like ancient mythology, dragons of the east could control the elements. Fire, lightning, wind. And in anime, Kaido, fire, lightning, even wind. Water and ice potentially too. Ooh. I would not be surprised in the slightest if these things come to pass in the manga, not in the slightest. But of course, real quick, this is a bit disheartening in another way, because it means that in a certain sense, Oda can kind of cheat us a bit when it comes to the actual canon manga content, where he may have to go as in depth with these things, 
because he can go in depth in other mediums, like again, the favorite cards, maybe even games, anime, and so on. It is disheartening to find out things like Fujitora's Devil Fruit, what the name is, or Zoro's lineage to the Shimotsuki clan. Like these things being in manga would be really, really dope and really awesome. And Oda choosing to either have Vivid Cards explain it or put it in potentially video games, that kind of stuff, or have the anime kind of cover that stuff. That is, as a manga reader, disheartening because the validity of these things wouldn't be questioned, number one, if they're in the manga. And then number two, you would only assume that these details would make the manga better. Obviously, finding out Fujitora's power when, let's say, we get a flashback of Fujitora against Sabo, that would have been really damn dope. Rather than here's an SBS or here's a favorite card, all this information. Or maybe let's say Luffy and Jack fight, and then Luffy does conquer his hockey, and then let's say Jack has a flashback of fighting against Sengoku, and then he does the ability to get some of his men. You know, sh stuff like that. That is stuff that I think. <sighs> damn it. So on one front, it's, huh, wow, damn, really, video games. But on the other hand, it's like, damn, video games? Really? Mm. Or vivid cards? Really? Mm. So, it, it, it's tough. But as a manga reader, I would much, 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 much rather these things to be actually in manga where their validity is unquestioned in the manga, in the primary canon, rather than reading a data book. <sighs> but it is what it is there. Oda wants to end a story in X amount of time, and maybe he feels that if he does cover those deals in the manga, it will take too much time, quote unquote time. And with the video games, having the characters move set be like fully fleshed out in those games can, let's say, lessen the burden on Oda and what he can write in the manga. Potentially, maybe? The same goes to Kaido as well. So Kaido's doing ice stuff in the actual video game. This makes it easier on Oda to actually write that out in the manga. Maybe. If we do see later on that these things are real. I mean, the man is gonna be, he's in his mid to late 40s. Approaching 50 in what? Three, four years? I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. Be sure to rate the video. Not that hard to do. I guarantee you that because I know that you all have a device called Zaymao Su. Use Zaymao Su to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell to join the squad. And of course, as always, once again, feel free to please do comment in the comment section down below. Whether or not Shanks has the strongest armor hockey in the verse, we'll see. Only time can tell. But the video games could be a gateway to letting us know that he probably does. Peace and have a nice goddamn day.